Th if you want the most stable possible job simply because there are no there's there's so few people that uh that know it become an expert level COBOL or Fortran developer because there's so few people competing for those jobs and a lot of those people are close to retirement it's going to be hard to get one of those jobs but the second you get it they will never get rid of you because nobody else no knows how else. to touch that arcane code and they're not exactly. going to find some, like, junior dev they can train up for it. Nobody's going to want to learn it. So it, it, it's, it's just going to... It's going to be you. Never let them convince you, though, that it's a good idea to update the system into something like C Sharp. Because the second that you rewrite it into something sensible, they don't need you anymore. Because now they can mm. hire someone who's not a Copal yeah. developer. Exactly. I hate I hate the old stuff. It's 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 insane. <laughs> like updating a system, like it doesn't matter if it's Windows or Linux. Updating an old system mm -hmm. and do like major version jumps over over years. Mm -hmm. that's, that's actually insane. I I know of a server which mm. I tried migrating a bunch of times. <laughs> it's uh, Windows Server two thousand eight, mm -hmm. which is fairly old at this point, and like you, you just can't update it. You cannot make a new server and put the program on it because mm -hmm. the program depends on it on a lot of stuff that needs to be carried over. I think right. it's licensing stuff and and all that no. because there is no licensing server anymore and, and all that. Right. Uh, so so you need to do an in-place upgrade, but the in-place upgrade doesn't work because of some dependencies and it's it's ah. yeah no it's it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> Especially with these like really old systems where you don't have redundancy built in place, there's always the worry of, it, especially like, if you have a system that hasn't been shut down a long time, like is it going to turn back on? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I've I've definitely heard horror stories of there was a server that w that people were running in this company. No one no one really knew like why it was running or what who set it up but they realized very quickly as soon as it uh caused a problem that they didn't have a redundancy solution in place 10 years ago and it turns mm. out that was like a core part of their system that just it's gone now good luck um, yeah that's that's not a good practice <laughs> Oh, look, I, I'm really bad with, like, redundancy on my system, but, like, if you have something in production, whether it's, like, it, it doesn't matter what it is, you probably should have at least some basic redundancy. Some, like, yeah. bare minimum, like, data backups. Preferably recent data backups as well. It's, it's all well and good to have a data backup, but if you haven't updated it in five years, it's not that useful for <laughs> backup. Backup, backups are so incredibly important. Like it doesn't really matter for which system. Like mm -hmm. of course for business or server side, it's it's really important. But on your home PC, you don't really think about it much. Mm -hmm. But then something <laughs> breaks, and you're like, oh, there were some important documents on there, or maybe there were some pictures on it that you would like to have. Mm. I've lost a bunch of SD cards of all the SD cards with a lot of memories, mm -hmm. or the SD cards break, which mm -hmm. also happens. I've had servers crashes. I had the Windows system of mine completely hard reset. I have no idea what happened there. After an update, it just never came back. And there was no way of getting the data off the drive. Mm -hmm. Just completely. And like stuff like that makes you realize you you need backups. Yeah. It's 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 incredibly important. And I it, it happened so many times already. I think it seven times already that my PC corrupted in some way. Mm -hmm. Or so some PC corrupted, yeah. <laughs> well, the last... I, I still don't have great backups, and I really should, because I this has bitten me, like, recently, where I... To be fair, it was my fault. Um, I had this issue where every so often I booted my system, I would get a systemd error message, and it would be like, uh, something, something couldn't mount your home and I would need to like run a command it would fix it and that was fine it it was fine for like six months then at one point uh, I opened it and 
a bunch of random files were just missing. I think I lost maybe, I think I lost two podcasts. So I lost like four hours of recordings. I lost maybe like three videos that I, I hadn't uploaded yet. And a bunch of other random things. <laughs> Don't do that. Do as I say, not as I do. Have data backups. I, I'm i bad at it. Do not be like me. Even if it's not a NAS, like, just have something. Have a, have a second drive that you mirror directly to. It doesn't have to be a complicated setup. Mm. And getting it, like, a, a another drive isn't really that expensive now. Like, you, it, they're, they're, drives are pretty cheap. Yeah. I think a lot of people also don't use their second, or a lot of members have a second M.2 slot. Mm. A lot of people just don't use it. Mm. I mean, if you put in a, a very cheap one and do like even a hardware RAID, which basically every modern main port supports, mm -hmm. like you just mirror that stuff and it will automatically tell you when you put up a PC that one drive is broken, then you can exchange it, but you mm -hmm. can still use your PC. Mm -hmm. Even though mirroring is technically no backup, but <laughs> that's a, that's its whole other issue. Yeah, you, like people, uh, I, I, I guess, I get people saying, oh, well, you shouldn't have a a mirror in your system. You should have a you should have that in like a external machine. Like, what's what's the general guidance? It's a local. It's like a a local copy, a cloud copy, and there's something else. Like, there's, there's a general guideline people have for like a proper data backup. Because you know, if you're mm -hmm. if you break your machine, you might even if you have like a a secondary drive, you might break the other drive as well. So you should have a another drive and another machine and then you should have an off-site copy as well yeah or at least some some external media that doesn't rely on some form of electricity battery or whatever yeah yeah that's like the, the overall suggestion and i mean it's kind of true because like if for some reason or let's just say your your house or whatever is with a lightning strike and for some reason it manages to fry your pc mm -hmm. if you had a mirror setup or you had a, a second hard drive in it and both are gone then yeah yeah <laughs> it's not all that great uh on the other hand if you have like a, a usb stick which you also like back up once once a month or something or like an external hard drive that is safe as long as it's not connected to the system mm -hmm. um it's a good practice but i also don't really do it so mm -hmm. it should be something <laughs> to think about well, then there's the whole idea of having something off-site as well, whether that's like cloud storage or whatever it is. Because, you know, if your house floods, you could lose both the mirror and also the USB. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be... <laughs> I, yeah, that, that, that depends. <laughs> I guess it depends on, like, the environment you're in. Like, you know, in, in somewhere like Australia. Like, in South Australia, we don't really have any natural disasters here. Like, when there's a... The last time there was an earthquake, um, they had like a big news story about it. And an earthquake in South Australia is somebody's window cracks. That's pretty much it. Like it'll maybe like a brick will slightly move out of place. We don't really get earthquakes here. We don't. The mm. worst we get here are bushfires, um, and they can get pretty bad. But yeah. In, like, where I am, like, it's... Besides, like, a, you know, a house fire, which is going to happen anywhere. Like, you don't really get general natural disasters here. Like, it's pretty... It's pretty safe where I am. If I was in, like, Queensland, they get, like, hurricanes up there. They get floods up there. Um, we don't really get earthquakes here, though, because fault lines and all that. But if you are somewhere mm. that gets earthquakes, uh, yeah, I guess maybe off-site backup is probably a better idea as well mm -hmm. yeah but <clears throat> do something <laughs> do, do <laughs> something something is better than nothing yeah at least at least one copy is always good doesn't really matter how old it is mm -hmm. it should have some some sort of content on it mm -hmm. like I, I i usually keep one uh backup around mm -hmm. which like like my PC is pretty simple. I actually don't save anything on my PC, basically, mm -hmm. except maybe some some recent downloads, some some ISO files or something. And I do have a picture folder or directory. Mm -hmm. uh, so all, all that basic stuff, which I 
copy once over. Mm -hmm. And if I do some changes, then I copy them once a month or whatever to, to another system. Mm -hmm. But I actually don't really do that. So I essentially have one backup that's over a year old, mm -hmm. which is exactly the system in the way it was before when it comes in terms of files and like the important stuff. Right, right. I guess it also depends on like how much you're adding files, depending on what you want to do, right? Like a mm. lot of things you have, if it's like, you know, tax documents from however long your country requires you to have... Um, history for or anything else like that a lot of, a lot of things you have they don't need to be up to date copies because it's not something that is changing but if it is something like uh i don't know video stuff for example like a video that you're working on then you might change how you want to handle that data backup whether you want to do like mm. a especially with something like a video right like maybe a a mirror is fine for that because the life like the life cycle of that video is going to be a lot less than something like memories you want to keep. You might, I, I don't know how often you upload, but like if you record something, if you record something like the video, yeah, you can argue like, you know, you want to, you want to keep things around. Like you could have like a petabyte server like LTT has, but <laughs> most people hmm. when they're doing videos are not keeping their old content around. Um, so it doesn't really need to live that long. Hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, I think it also depends on uh, how serious you are in the backups, if you have any requirements in terms mm. of legal requirements. Like, I'm not sure if that's actually true or not, because like, like a lot of the stuff is written, but I technically would need to keep all of my videos, I think for six months or something, mm -hmm. just in case something happens. I'm not sure if that applies to YouTube or not. It, it's a bit weird. Mm -hmm. um, but there are also some documents that I have digitally saved that I would have to keep for a long time. So I do need to keep backups just in case, mm -hmm. even though m most likely nothing would happen if there actually was a data loss. I mean, who's going to come to my house? <laughs> do you have that document? Yeah, sure. No, whatever. <laughs> 